right into it, man. Mm -hmm. Lineker versus John Dotson. How do you like this matchup? Oh, well, I, uh, I like it a lot. I like I like it a lot. lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, John versus John. Uh, I mean, you got two guys that uh, that were flyweights, right? Yep. And and they're now at uh, bantamweight. They and both of them have uh, have faced uh, Demetrius Johnson, the, the flyweight champion. Yep. Uh, actually, uh, Dotson faced him twice and almost it, beat him in that first round, that first fight. Oh yeah, I mean, he knocked DJ down like three times in that fight. Yep. Uh, still ended up losing. And then and Lineker also lost. Uh, I forget how that one exactly how the, what the finish was there, but um, but he lost to Mighty Mouse as well. So um, you know what are you what are you going to do? You know uh, if you can move to another weight class, you know it might be better to do that. And uh, you know as far as I can tell, both of these guys have flourished in the bantamweight division since moving to it. So we've got that. Basically, what it boils down to is, I mean, you got you got two guys that both have knockout power. Um, and but I would give the uh, I would give a slight edge in knockout power to John Lineker uh, over Dodson. I would give Dodson a uh, fairly significant speed, speed advantage. advantage. Yes. Yeah, and 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 also a more well-roundedness. I mean, to, Lineker to, will literally just throw down with you. You know. Well, that's the thing. Lineker uh, wants you to stand in front of him, and he's very heavy with his punches. You know, they're well, not sharp punches. They're very heavy. They got a, lot, got, a lot of, got a lot of windmill action there. Yeah, yes. Lineker wants you to stand in front of him and bang. Dotson's not going to do that. Dotson no. he's is... A he's, a, he's, a, he's the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. He's going to be bouncing all around. Ding, 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 ding. So uh, it's going to be very difficult for Lineker. Lineker's going to be like, well, you just stop so I can hit you, please. <laughs> just, just stay right there just for a second and so I can hit you. that's frustrating, man. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to a fight. Um, or even, you know, baseball, when you, when you miss swinging at the baseball, it's frustrating. Sure. Sure is, man. Yeah. I mean, sucks, uh, striking out, you know? And John uh, Dodson is literally the fastest man in the UFC easily. Yeah. And Mighty Mouse. I mean, I, I'd say uh, they're, they're about tied. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the way the, that? the way the video game breaks it down was like, you know how they have the speed notches, like, uh, John Dotson is is over Mighty Mouse by like is that months. right? Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, I'll I'll go with that. Sure. I mean, yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, as as Pat said, speed kills, it, and it certainly does. Um, I mean, we saw that in uh, the Manny Gambarian fight. Yes, and we we saw that in the Connor versus Aldo. I mean, Connor yeah. was first. Connor got hit by Aldo's punch, but it was only after he connected on Aldo. You know, so um, I do I do see Dotson winning this fight. Um, I don't know if he's, if he's going to be able to knock Lineker out. Um, it might end up being like a uni unanimous decision. Ooh, five rounds. Hey, I mean, these guys are in shape. They yeah, can do it. Exactly. I mean, it's not like, uh, they're bigger guys. It could easily go five rounds. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going with unanimous decision for Dodson. You know, that's a good call because, uh, you know, you never know when it comes down to this weight class, but honestly, Ted, John Dodson has 10 knockouts, two wins by submission, seven wins by decision. So I do understand that. Let's look at John Lineker really quick. Um, and, right. and let let alone if John Dodson beats Lineker here in this division, he's gonna jump right up the ranks. Uh, John yeah. Lineker is ranked third here. So. Uh, and where's Dodson? Uh, ten. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, but you know what? Lineker is on a huge win streak. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five fight win streak. That last one against uh, Michael McDonald was huge, man. He That went down quick in the first round. John Lineker, 13 wins by knockout, 4 wins by submission, and 11 wins by decision. So I do kind of see this kind of um, your point here. It could go to decision here. Mm -hmm. But then again, um, his takedown accuracy is pretty good as well. He could easily lay a, a ground and pound if he catches John Dodson. That's true. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, uh, how is Lineker on the ground? I mean, he, he's a Brazilian. Uh, you wouldn't know it just by hearing his name, but he is a, he is a Brazilian. I mean, is, is he, uh, he, he prefers to stand and bang, but I mean, does he, what's his, uh, rank in jujitsu? I am not sure, but we do know he's, he's an aggressive fighter. He's got great cardio, right. but the speed just isn't going to match up. I don't see the speed matching up here. Um, I think John Dodson is going to do it here. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. One more thing I want to talk about quick. Uh, Ill Will Brooks is fighting Alex the Cowboy Oliveira, Ted. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And you're Will familiar Brooks with both of these fighters. Um, you know, Cowboy just coming off that fight with... Um, Cowboy. Cowboy, but he also had a fight after that where he oh, did, did he? win. did he? Okay. And, you know, he, he showed the world a lot that night. Uh, even though Cowboy won that fight, you know, he really did do uh, a really good job in there. So, Ill Will Brooks coming in here with a record of 18-1. and one. We saw his last fight against uh, Ross Pearson where he did amazing. What do you think here, though? Will Brooks or Cowboy? Well, I, I think, I mean, cow, Cowboy wait, is... Wait, wait, uh, wait. We can't even call him Cowboy anymore, remember? Well, that was, that was uh, Loser Loses the, the, the nickname, right? Uh, yeah, so what do we but call he, him now? I don't know, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like if, if we ever get that fight between Mickey Gall and uh, and Sage Northcutt, loser oh, has man. to shave their head. That needs to happen. Oh, absolutely. And he needs to get his head shaved in the octagon. <laughs> right in the octagon, absolutely. Octagon. Just like pro wrestling, just shave it right off, right yeah. There. Or just get the nair out and just, just pull goes. it right out with the nair. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, I, Will Brooks, I mean – this guy is uh, is climbing the ladder in the uh, in the lightweight division. I just don't see uh, that Oliveira has has too much for him. You know what I mean? I, I mean he's he's a he's a good solid fighter. I just don't see that there's really any area where he is is going to uh, where he can dominate Will Brooks. You know, um, Will's on a mission. He's going to try to get to the top. And he's going to go through Cowboy to get there. I agree, man. Ilwa Brooks is uh, definitely on a mission and only lost once. His wrestling is absolutely amazing. I'm going with Ilwa Brooks here, but, you know, Alex could, could, could win. I mean, it's not that lopsided. Um, he is he's a, he's a strong dude, only has three losses. Ilwa Brooks, though, I, I see him coming out on top. Ted, I actually got to speak with somebody on this card Sunday night. I got to speak with the Barn Cat. Tandon McCrory. There you go, bro. Oh, I've interviewed him uh, a few years back. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was, it was at a local show uh, uh, here in, uh, it was in, it was in uh, I think it was in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was in Lancaster. He was there because he was, uh, at the time, he was, uh, he probably still lives in upstate New York. But uh, I don't know if he's still affiliated with the academy that he had at that time. But he was there as a corner man. He was, he was cornering some other fighters. And uh, I'll have to send you the clip. But, uh, yeah, I, I saw him backstage real quick. And this was in that five-year period when he wasn't fighting. Oh, okay. This was after he got cut from the UFC. After he got, after he got cut from the UFC. This was after that. And so it was somewhere in that five-year period where he wasn't fighting. But I was like, I saw him from afar, you know. it was at the, Like I said, it was at this local show. And I'm like, I know that cat. And, uh, <laughs> it's the barn cat. Well, I know that cat. That, that's the barn cat. And so then I had a camera guy with me, and we, we went backstage and just talked to him real quick. Now, Ted, and, when, you, uh, when you go to shows, I don't mean you can finish in a second. When you go to shows, do you hire a cameraman? No, I was just a buddy of mine. We, we, were, we were co-workers at the time, okay. and uh, we, we were just starting off. This was probably like, God, uh, 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. We were just starting off in YouTube. And uh, we, we were doing like a little show, um, kind of similar to this, except we would sit in the same room. And uh, yeah, so we, we were just like, oh, let's go to the show, bring the camera, and we'll, we'll shoot some videos, you know? That's legit. It's like one of these things where when the time was right, the time was right for him to come back. And it just had to happen, you know? Well, you know what? I think he came into the UFC too soon. He started training at 19 years old and was signed into the UFC at 20. So there's right. your problem right there. And uh, his last... Yeah, yeah, a little on the young side. Sure, I mean, yeah. we can do that with inexperience. You know, guys like Sage Northcutt, you know, and, and uh, Paige Van Zant. You get into the UFC too young, and, and you get thrown into the shark tank. I mean, he was fighting people like John Howard and shit. So, uh, you know, he came back into the UFC last December. He won against Josh Berkman, and then he recently just lost to, uh, to Juno. But you know what? I got to speak with him here. He said that he is so ready for this fight. He actually went out to Las Vegas to start training. Um, you know, get some more sparring partners. Training with uh, Dewey over there. So I'm looking forward to this. The UFC actually had like a little special for him that they made of, of his return and his goals right now uh, for yeah. this fight. So 
So I'm looking forward to that. Who do you think is going to win this fight, though? He's going up against Nate Marquardt, who, who's at the end of his career, if you ask me. I don't know. Uh, it's a hit or a miss with him as well. Right, yeah. Uh, Nate Marquardt, yeah, at this, at this stage, he's kind of hot and cold. You know what I mean? He has flashes of brilliance, and then, um, you know, and then you're like, whoa, what, what's going on with this what's guy? What's going on, yeah. Right. Didn't, now, you said with Tamden, you say he was training with Dewey. You said Dewey. Dewey Cooper? Dewey Cooper. Oh, the Black Cobra. Dewey Cooper, yeah. Yeah, he used to he used to train at. Uh, is he still at One Kick Knicks? Uh, is it in Vegas? Yeah, it might be. I mean, One uh, Kick Knicks. Yeah, Nick. Um, oh God, what is his last name? But his his nickname is One Kick. He's he's a famous uh, kickboxing uh, trainer really? out there. And and Dewey used to used to train at Nick's place. Yeah, man. Uh, Nate Marquardt literally almost has fifty fights now in the U. He has 55 matches uh, in MMA, 37 of those wins, 12 of them knockouts, 14 submissions, uh, and only 11 decisions. Um, but uh, oh, yeah, the guy's been around for a long time. He's a former former Pancrase, uh, king of Pancrase. He, he's hot and cold. So um, this is an even fight, though. I think Tamden is going to take this one here. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to go with that. I'd have to go with that. And one last mention really quick. Andre Feely, touchy-feely, going against Hakron Diaz. Um, you just want to say touchy-feely. <laughs> <laughs> Every chance you get. So touchy-feely um, coming in this fight, coming off a loss. His last loss was to Yair Rodriguez, who I cannot wait to see his next fight. Yeah, 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 yo. Yeah, 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 yo. Spin, spin, spun. Spin and spin, spin. Um, Andre Feely... Having a tough time uh, recently after that last loss, but I have enough faith in him here to beat Hakron Diaz, who's coming off a loss himself to Cub Swanson. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Eddie, you know what? I trust your judgment in this one, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go with that. I'm I mean, going touchy, with you. Touchy Feely got knocked out in that last fight to Yair Rodriguez in a crazy way with that flying knee. Yair Rodriguez is just a dangerous man. Hmm. Mm. Very so, scary. Yeah, scary individual. Fight, is going to be this weekend, guys, and it's going to be free once again on FS1. You guys definitely should go check Ted's page out. You can find me on Twitter as well. Ted, was that all you had uh, for your tag? No, I, I'm good, man. I am good. All right. So you guys can find me on Twitter at evil under dash echo. That's E V I L under dash E C C O. If you want to be part of the Pure Evil Army, all you got to do is use hashtag Pure Evil MMA or Pure Evil Army. Become part of the group. Make your predictions with us on UFC Pick'em. All you got to do is contact me on Twitter or even on Facebook.